inside the a-hole for leaving my son's wedding early. The results are in, amigo. And yes, you are the a-hole. Hello, lovely humans, and welcome back to another episode of AITA Reddit Reaction. Um, it's a work in progress with the title. But a couple months ago, I received a suggestion from one of you saying, you know what you should do? You should go on Reddit and you should react to some of these AITA wedding posts. And I thought, I don't know what that means. <laughs> And then I did, and now they are by far some of the most popular segments we do here on this channel. If you're new here, hi, my name is Jamie Wolfer. I'm your online wedding planner. I am here to help you plan your wedding easily, stress less, because you deserve a stress-free wedding day. It does not have to be that difficult. I don't care what the internet tells you. Wedding planning is very simple, really and truly very simple. It's the emotions, the finances, and the etiquette that kind of gets in the way. So that's what I'm here for. If you yourself are in the middle of wedding planning and just coming here for a little bit of comedic relief or maybe to compare your stories with ones I'm about to tell, I hear you. I'm here for you. Also, I have something called the master plan to help you plan your wedding. I walk you through everything that you need to know from the very beginning, from the moment that ring hits your finger to when you walk down the aisle or uh, actually when you walk down under the sparklers at the end of your event. It's everything you need to know about wedding planning in chronological order without missing a beat, including live calls and live office hours with real life wedding planners because you deserve to have a stress-free wedding day, all right? And I know sometimes when I talk about my products, we have a little bit of a longer intro, but listen, if I'm not gonna talk about it, who else will? Thank you so much. So without further ado, let's just jump right into um, this story. Okay, if you like me have no idea what this is, there is an option on Reddit for you to go post stories um, and ask Redditors to rate whether you are the a-hole or not. A-I-T-A. Am I the a-hole? Uh, and this person, it was a resounding yes, you are. So let's read it, shall we? My son, Alan, 26-year-old male, uh, has just recently gotten married to Helen, 25 to 26-year-old female. I love them both very much. Cool. Cool. Great. <laughs> it's relevant to mention that I really dislike parties and large gatherings. I'm not sociable at all, and I just really dislike them. So it was kind of a downer when I heard that Alan and Helen were going to have a wedding with around 150 people. Already we're using very interesting language. I dislike gatherings. I'm not sociable. I dislike them. It's kind of a downer. Interesting. Okay. I told Alan ahead of time that I would probably leave early and that me and the rest of our family would take two cars so that they could stay if they wanted to. He looked like he didn't mind at all. All right. Uh, so at the wedding itself, after the ceremony, I basically told him I was glad and it looked great, but I was going to go home. He asked if I was going to at least stay for cake or for food, but the food didn't look all that appetizing to me. So I, oh, you better not have told him that. So I told him I was just going to leave. He said, all right, whatever, just go. Okay. And I went back to my table to get my stuff. I told my wife and she said she didn't feel comfortable driving back alone. I thought the family was taking two different cars, not the couple. Interesting. The venue was very far from us and the roads there were not great. I said that in case she should come with me and after some hemming and hawing, she agreed. So we left. So both parents have now left early because the dad dislikes large gatherings. And like, no, I'm gonna hold my opinions. I'm holding them. Okay. Then two days later, Alan's new wife bombarded me and my wife with messages that she was really disgusted with us, saying horrible things about us and insulting us as people and as parents. Really just sickening. I told her off, great, because that makes things so much better, right? Two people being really aggressively angry with each other. And asked why she thought it was okay to talk to her in-laws like that. And she said that us leaving ruined the wedding for Alan. And he was very upset for the rest of the night. She continued to berate us. I politely told her to leave us alone and called Alan, mainly to inform him that his wife had a temper and that he should know about. Ooh. As if he doesn't already know? You... Okay. And just because she's angry doesn't mean she has a temper. Okay. Uh, when we talked, he basically started berating me too, saying things like, you always do this and just leave me alone before hanging up. I feel like I'm justified since I told him ahead of time I wasn't going to stay. Am I the a-hole here? Edit since so many people care about the details. Okay. Okay. <laughs> when I read this next part, they're not details. All right. Yes, there was a mother-son dance planned. Planned. Not, not done. Planned. Yes, he included me in the count for the food costs. Yes, I love him. No, this does not mean that I do not care about him. First and foremost, obviously, we are only seeing a fraction of this relationship in um, one large paragraph and two small ones. I'm a little torn on this one. Okay, first of all, from a wedding planner's perspective, leaving before dinner is bizarre. Like borderline unconscionable, okay? At least in the weddings that I work, in the cultures that I'm familiar with, 
basically, leaving early means leaving when the cake is cut. That's like the signal for everyone over the age of 62 to leave the building because they know some sort of rap slash trap music is about to come bombarding through the speakers and they're not here for it. They got their sweets, maybe a little bit of coffee to go with it, get their merry little behinds on home. But usually when you leave early at a wedding, you wait until the cake is served. I don't know why. I didn't make these rules. All I know is that's the norm, okay? Like cake comes out, old people go, see ya. And I shouldn't say old because I recognize that if you're in your mid 60s, that is not old at all. But like literally anyone who wants to leave early, they try to make it to the cake. So to not even make it through dinner is very weird. Very, very, very weird, in my opinion. Unless something has happened that has made it kind of like catastrophic and the person really does need to go. So the fact that the father of the groom leaves before the meal is even served and has the mom leave with him, especially because there's a mother-son dance that was supposed to happen, that's the part that gets me. I don't care if you don't eat. I don't care if you don't stay for the cake. There is a special, precious moment that they intended to be shared between the son and his mom that they never got to have because you don't like social gatherings. That for me is the planner. That hits the hardest. The fact that we have to change what the schedule looks like and he doesn't ever get to have this moment with his mother because you wanted to leave. Now, with all that being said, my next response might surprise you just a little bit. The father of the groom said what he was going to do and he did it. And this has been in his character the entire time. It's not that he left. He said that was going to happen. We knew that was going to happen. Son knew that was going to happen. It's the fact that he left when he did. Again, because the cultural norm for most of the weddings that we work is once the cake comes out, you are allowed to leave. I do find it interesting though, because had the father of the groom changed his language a little bit, instead of saying, I dislike social gatherings and said something like, I have social anxiety, I wonder if the votes would change. I get anxious in social environments. I don't last long in large group gatherings. Everyone knows this about me. I warned my son that this was going to happen. On the day of the wedding, the anxiety got too high and I needed to leave. This dad is from a generation of people who didn't talk in mental health terms like we do now. Maybe he has social anxiety and it's not just he dislikes large groups, right? It's that he cannot stay in a circumstance like that for very long because of his anxiety. So if we change the phrasing of this, would we consider him less of an a-hole? I don't know. I think it's important to just toss that into the mix because simply because he's not privy to mental health lingo doesn't mean that's not what he was experiencing, all right? All he knows is that he doesn't like gatherings. But I know, I know, we see a lot of a-hole moments throughout this entire passage, so I'm not excusing him of everything. I'm just tossing that in as a grain of salt. So then two days later to have the new wife call, this is where I probably, if I was the wife in this situation, I don't know if I would pick up the phone and make that phone call. Simply because this is a brand new relationship, you will be in this relationship for decades, and I think it would be a lot more powerful coming directly from their son than it would from their new daughter-in-law. That's not to say that she had no right to call. That's not to say that he had any right to call his son and say, you better check your wife. She has a temper. I just think for the social balance of it, it would make so much more sense for the son to call and set that boundary than it does for the new daughter-in-law to do that. Because in the parent's opinion, as we can see here, he doesn't really feel like the daughter-in-law has a leg to stand on. Again, she has every right to do it. Again, I don't disagree with what she said. But when we're dealing with someone like this, they probably don't have the ears to hear how poorly they behaved from someone who's basically brand new in their lives, right? As opposed to hearing it directly from the son, that might hold more weight and more meaning to it. In fact, we see the father of the groom completely dismiss what she says and call it her having a temper, therefore negating any of her arguments, any of her words, like, oh, it's just because she's overly angry. That's why. So I'm going to ignore what came out of her mouth because of the tone that she used, which we see right here. She continued to berate us. I politely told her to leave us alone and called Alan, mainly to inform him that his wife had a temper that he should know about. You mean to tell me that you think that your son married this woman knowing that she didn't get passionate about things? Knowing that she didn't get angry? This is something that just grinds my gears. There is nothing wrong with anger. There is nothing wrong with anger. And getting angry is not a bad thing. It's what you do with it that matters, right? Now, if you start name calling, throwing things, speaking aggressively, that's a poor use of anger. But if you are speaking passionately and you are not going out of your way to offend somebody and you are passionately defending your position, that doesn't mean you have a temper. Okay, we don't need to get into that. <laughs> that's something I'm very, very, speaking of passion, that's something I'm very passionate about with my kids is I'm like, hey, I don't mind you being angry. If I was in your position, I'd be angry too. It's what you do with it that matters. I probably say that phrase 17 times a week in this house. It's what you do with it that matters. I validate your emotions. I validate your feelings. 
We do not dismiss someone's feelings simply because we don't like how they're saying something. But with my kids, I'm trying to teach them how to say it in a more effective way so they can be heard better. How about that? Okay. So he calls the son. The son basically started braiding him too, saying things like, you always do this, just leave me alone before hanging up. So now we see that this is a pattern of behavior. And the son had hoped that on one day, this one day, dad would act different. This one day. I think what could have happened before this whole entire shebang went down is that son could have said to dad, hey dad, I know you said you're going to leave early. Can you please stay until X point, right? I know this. I know this is your behavior. Clearly communicating my wants and my needs from you. Can you stay until this point? I just want to make sure I have the mother-son dance with my mom and that y'all are there for the cake cutting and then you can go. Of course, there is a chance that the son had no clue that the dad was going to leave that early. Again, remember, culturally, we don't leave till cake is cut. So to leave right after the ceremony is bizarre. Like, look at the food and go, no, it doesn't look good. I'm going to go home. Weird, okay? So the son might have just assumed the dad knew he was going to wait that long. We don't know. Now I get it. This thread is very old. As I'm reading this, it's seven months old, okay? But the tea was too spicy to let it simmer after over half a year, so we're still investigating. Okay, okay, let's read the comments. You are the a-hole. You didn't even stay for the meal that they paid for. What an absolutely disgusting lack of love and respect from you as a parent. You also strong-armed your wife into leaving, too, so your son had no parents present at his reception. How you don't see that you're the a-hole is a mystery to me. My guess is this man has been the the main character of his own story for so long that he just kind of doesn't he doesn't think about it I don't think he's intentionally trying to hurt people but his head is so far up the you know what the fact that he left before the mother son dance or the speeches speaks volumes I agree you could have just waited a little bit longer like it's like timeline wise it's not that much longer until the speeches and the dances happen 45 minutes maybe like you could have held out dude Maybe an hour, okay? Let's call it an hour and 20. If we're being generous, you got a sloppy timeline, which by the way, you shouldn't have a sloppy timeline, okay? Ever. If you want a professional looking timeline for a fraction of the cost, check out perfectweddingtimeline.com right here. It's this gorgeous timeline software that helps you put together the literal perfect wedding timeline. As does your comment about the food not being appetizing. Your son is fed up with you pulling the stunt every time he needs you. Ooh, that could be painfully accurate. Not sure why you can't see that you're the a-hole. By the way, I might leave early does not mean right after the ceremony I'm leaving. Your son deserves so much better. I agree. Just because the father said, I'm leaving early, I could, what if he left in the middle of the ceremony? Like that would be preposterous, right? There are some cultural norms that we kind of subscribe to. And if you're going to bypass all of those, then we're going to have some questions, sir, or you're going to be voted the a-hole online. I do see a couple comments about him bullying his wife into leaving with him. I mean, my guess is this is the culture and the nature of their relationship, right? She was nervous about the roads. I get that. Um, he's probably used to playing main character energy um, in this relationship. And she's used to just kind of going with the flow of whatever he says. So I don't know if he bullied her into it or if he's just systemically been bullying her. Or if this is just, she just happens to be more submissive. And when he says, let's go, she goes, all right, I'm not gonna fight you on it. That's cool. Let's go. Because she is nervous about the roads. Again, we don't know the nature of this relationship but I don't think that this is like standalone behavior. This was your son's wedding and you managed to make it all about you. You don't like parties. You don't think the food looked appetizing. You made your wife leave early. I don't know about that one. You stopped him from celebrating the biggest moment of his life with the two people who were the most important people to be there aside from his wife and are supposed to love him the most. Oh, that hits heavy. Then your son got to spend the rest of his wedding reception explaining you and your failure to be present at his wedding to all the other wedding guests. Cause you know people are walking up and being like, hey, where's your dad? Hey, I would love to say hi to your dad. Where's your dad? Hey, where's your mom? I'd love to talk to her. I haven't seen her since blah, blah, blah. <laughs> they left. They left to the point where I'm sure the couple wanted to run up to the DJ, grab the microphone and say, they like, hey, uh, father and mother of the groom have left. Please stop asking. You know, just like stop rubbing it in. I know you don't know that, but they're like, this sucks. Then his wife finally had enough of watching her new husband's emotional trauma that you caused she snapped and let you know how much she loves him. Then you got offended that she called you out on your BS, even if it was in a vile way. Again, the anger's fine. No problem with the anger. It's what we do with it that matters, okay? You caused all of this by valuing yourself and your desires above your own son on the biggest day of his life. Shame on you. You're the a-hole. 100% you're the a-hole. It's your son's wedding, and no matter how uncomfortable you feel, it's your duty as a father to be there. It's one evening. Suck it up, man. As a planner in a situation like this, we have had, and I'm gonna make sure I'm speaking with enough respect in this situation, we had a father who was uh, slowly dying of terminal cancer on a wedding day, and we knew that there were pockets of time that we, we had to be flexible with the timeline. We knew that there was a physical reason uh, an emotional reason, a mental reason that he could not be physically present. And we definitely made sure to craft and curate the timeline around that. 
to be honoring of what was going on with him. We also do this with couples when they're feeling overly anxious, especially if they're more private um, and they don't want to be in public or around people the whole time. We create pockets of time for them to slip away. In fact, I have a couple videos on this channel about like if you're an introvert and you're planning a wedding, what you can do to like get away for a minute and give yourself a little bit of reprieve. We could have done the same for the father in this situation. All right, the food doesn't look good to you. Tell you what, why don't you go to the drive-thru, grab something to eat, go eat in your car for a little bit, come back so you can be here for speeches and then the first dance and see how long we can get you through this. Let's give you some personal space to make sure you have enough energy to make it throughout the rest of the evening. Yes, your son might be a little upset that he paid for a meal, but at least we got him through the evening, right? At least we got him to the cake cutting. Again, it's not a perfect scenario, but it's much better than missing the speeches, which he might have been slotted to give one. A lot of parents give speeches during the reception. So he didn't say anything about it, so we're gonna assume that he didn't have that opportunity, but he did specifically mention the mother son dance. You're the a-hole. You missed all of the traditional wedding reception things. You didn't make a speech. Again, we don't know if he was slotted to give one. Your wife didn't dance with your son. He didn't have his parents there to celebrate with him, even for an hour or two. You didn't express love, just, hey, you look great, but I'm gonna leave. And then you dragged your wife with you all because you couldn't be bothered to give him two hours of your time at his wedding. Someone replied, when I read leaving early, I assumed they stayed for at least the meal and first dances. Nope, Ro dipped out after the ceremony and bullied his wife into leaving then too. I'm like, did they stay for the cocktail hour? Like maybe his social cup runneth over because they stayed during cocktail hour and reception hit and he was like ready to just pull his hair out. And again, we're giving a lot of grace to a person who sounds like a punk, right? He sounds like a punk in what he wrote. He is the a-hole in this situation, but let's like try to heap grace on top of this and, and see it from a slightly different perspective. Maybe, maybe he was done at that point. He shook too many hands, he talked to too many people and he was tapped out. This could have been a great opportunity for him to slip away, go eat somewhere else and then come back hopefully a little bit refreshed to make it further, right? Oh my gosh, okay, wait, I'm scrolling. Okay, because someone said info, at what point did you leave the wedding, right? Had the speeches and dancing happened. OP said, I left quite soon after the ceremony ended. The reception hadn't began yet. And then the person was like, you're the a-hole then. Like, that's awful. Your poor, poor son, you ruined his wedding. And then I skipped down a little bit because I, I skim read like a mother. The ceremonies were not completed yet. Wedding photos, wedding speeches, and cake cutting are all part of the ceremonies. You skipped the majority of the wedding event, the part where your presence was most needed. Even aside from money wasted, you RSVP'd for an expensive event and dining and then ditched. You publicly and rudely snubbed your own son in front of all his family and friends. You publicly snubbed your new daughter-in-law in front of her family, your family, and all of their friends. That's practically, if not literally, a statement of condonement. Frankly, I don't think there is any coming back from that for your in-laws or your son's family. Not only are you the a-hole, you're on thin ice for any sort of relationship going forward. If you don't recognize it and start shaping up, you'll not be any part of their lives at all. And then this comment. So he doesn't have his parents in any wedding pictures? So, uh, huh, there is a chance this, this couple has no photos with the father and mother of the groom. Here's how the timeline typically works for photos, okay? So there is the option if the couple does a first look that sometimes you do family photos ahead of the ceremony, right? You do them early. And again, if this guy has social anxiety, he could be very tapped out at this point, right? So potentially some family photos happen beforehand, um, which is great. I would oftentimes don't recommend that because it's just really hard to coordinate a lot of people before the ceremony. Uh, not only do you have the couple, but you have the wedding party and then we're adding a family on top of that. It just gets to be a lot. So usually those photos happen during cocktail hour. And again, he said he left pretty soon after the ceremony happened, which means, I mean, he didn't say anything about family photos, which he might or might not have done, but there is a chance that they left before family photos even happen. Because usually for me, when I write a timeline, we've got the ceremony and then during cocktail hour, immediately following the ceremony, we have family photos. We get all the groups together so they can't really like scurry around and like go get lost drinking or snacking in a corner somewhere. We keep them in the ceremony spot to take all of those family photos and then send them on their merry way. He didn't say anything about family photos. So is this going to be forever when they look back at these photos, you are not in them? That blows my mind. Cause he didn't say anything about it. I could not imagine my parents not being in my wedding photos. Like looking back and forever being reminded that my dad prioritized himself or gave way too much to his social anxiety to be present through cake. Heck, not even cake. Just like a dance with my mom or my dad. That, they, that he couldn't hang in that long. All right, last little comment, and then we'll wrap this up. I get it, I don't like socializing either. When my brother and his fiance announced their engagement, I admit my heart sank because I knew it meant a big wedding, which I'd have to attend. Do you know what I did? I acted like an adult, sucked it up, and went to the wedding because I love my brother and his now wife. That's what you do for the people you love. The thought of leaving prematurely never crossed my mind. If your social anxiety is so bad that you miss your son's wedding reception, then you really need some therapy to address it. Yes. 
Actually, you should have addressed it before the wedding so you could at least have tried to not let your son down. You are the a-hole. 100%. This reminds me of people who don't show up to funerals, people to whom they meant a lot because they don't like funerals. Nobody likes funerals. <laughs> well, I mean, this is kind of a different context, but people of character and decency suck it up and go to them anyway. And I haven't seen a lot of OP's responses, but based on the responses to his responses, my guess is he was very much defending his character. You guys, weddings are an instant pot of just emotions. Pressure cooker. That's what we're going for. You can do more in an instant pot than you can in a pressure cooker. So maybe this is an instant pot. There are so many emotions that are surrounding this. Like I said, planning an actual wedding day is not difficult. And if you feel like it is, you have to come join me in the master plan. I will break it down for you so simply. You're going to be like, I had no idea it was this easy. It's the emotions, the finances, and the etiquette that get in the way. Emotions. Finances. We paid for a meal that he didn't experience. Um, and etiquette. He didn't follow etiquette, right? He left early. Those are the parts that get complicated and messy. So wrap this up, interesting question for you. If you were the daughter-in-law in this scenario, what would you do? Right? Because I think we're all resounding, yes, he is the a-hole. But if you were in the daughter-in-law, what would you do? I don't know if I would have been the one to call, personally. I would have tried to bolster up my new husband to be like, I'm with you, I hear you. I will make the call if you want me to, but I think it'll be better coming from you. Um, and we can unpack that as much as you want to, but I think it needs to be you because I think they'll hear it better. To me, it'll just be like me screaming into the wind. I think they need to hear this directly from you. But I don't know. That's just me. That's just how my husband and I work. Let me know what you would do in the comments down below. And if you guys like these AITA wedding reaction videos, let me know. Jump on down there. Hit that like button. If you haven't done so already, also subscribe to this channel for more tips and tricks for the modern day bride and more AITAs. I try to do these at least once a month because y'all seem to love them like a whole lot. <laughs> so that's what we have for this week's video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. And until next week, bye guys.